London and Paris. Two of the largest, the most important, most famous, most powerful cities in the world. I mean, they both really are kind of a big deal. London is both the capital and largest city of England and the entire United Kingdom. Paris is both the capital and largest city of France. Both cities not only dominate the culture of their countries, but dominate the culture of the entire continent of Europe, or even the world, man. In terms of metropolitan areas, London is bigger. The London commuter belt has just over 14 million people, while the Paris metropolitan area has over 12.5 million people. So London is basically around 21% of the UK's population, and Paris is basically around 19% of France's population. The two cities are just 284 miles, or 457 kilometers, apart, and there are probably more options than you realize for ways to go back and forth between the two. You can fly, you can take a train and ferry across, you can drive all the way. Wait, huh? Drive? Well, kind of, thanks to the channel, an underground tunnel underneath the English Channel. Channel plus tunnel equals channel. What you really do with your car, though, is drive it onto a train, which then carries you through the channel. The quickest way to get between Paris and London is a train that goes straight through the channel. The journey only takes two and a half hours. Both are two of the most visited cities in the world. After Bangkok, Thailand, London is the second most visited city in the world, and Paris is the third most visited city in the world. Both have horrendous traffic, although it doesn't seem to be as bad in London. But yeah, try not to drive if you go to either one. Both are two of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. However, the cost of living is lower in London compared to Paris. And yeah, both are among the wealthiest cities in the world. In terms of GDP, London is ranked fifth and Paris is sixth. Both are financial capitals of the world, although London is uh, more. Yeah. The main industries of both are the service industries, especially the professional services in London and commerce in Paris. Both have lots of universities, but London arguably has the highest concentration of prestigious universities in the world. Both have a bike sharing system. Both have hosted the Olympics. Paris twice and London thrice. Both have a ridiculous amount of landmarks and tourist attractions. A few attractions of London include the Houses of Parliament, Parliament, St. Paul's Cathedral, the Tower Bridge, the Tower of London, Hyde Park, Buckingham Palace, and the London Eye. Oh, 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 sorry. The Coca-Cola London Eye. I forgot that Coca-Cola was taking over the world. London Bridge is actually really ugly and small. Big Ben is the bell, not the clock, and it's currently being renovated. And according to my wife, Leicester Square is, quote, the most London-y part of London. A few attractions of Paris include the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre Museum, Moulin Rouge, Notre Dame, the Arc de Triomphe, the Unknown Soldier in Eternal Flame, Paul de Sully, Le Marais, and Chaz Elysees. London does have more museums than Paris. Both aren't that far from major bodies of water, although London is closer, right there near the North Sea. Paris, not too far from that English Channel I mentioned earlier. Related to this, both have temperate oceanic climates. While while both have four seasons, the temperatures don't fluctuate too much. Paris gets a tad bit colder in the winter and a tad bit warmer in the summer. This may surprise you, but Paris actually gets more rain than London overall. London has more of the lightly spitting on you type of rain and maybe seems gloomier with less sunny days and more fog. They speak English in London and French in Paris. Actually, a lot of Paris residents do speak English. They often just pretend like they don't understand you speaking in English. London often jokingly gets called France's sixth biggest city due to having such a large French population. In fact, more French folks live in London than in Bordeaux. Paris is more densely populated than London. In the city proper, over 73% more dense. London residents are younger than Paris residents on average. London is growing at a bit faster rate than Paris. London is more multicultural and diverse. More than 18% of Paris residents were born in another country, which is a lot less than London. Why 
watching videos like this from a couple years ago and reading stories like this, you'd think that Paris is being overrun with immigrants, but apparently those stories are exaggerated. Yes, an increased number of migrants seeking asylum have arrived in Paris in recent years, but apparently they number only in the thousands, not hundreds of thousands. London has more billionaires and a lower unemployment rate than Paris. Ah, but Paris has a lower poverty rate. Regular settlement in Paris goes all the way back until at least 2000 BC, whereas the London area appears to be first settled around 500 years after that. Both used to be part of the Roman Empire. Paris is older than London. A Gallic tribe known as the Parisi established what would later be called Paris around 250 BC, while the Romans established London in 50 AD. By the Middle Ages, Paris had become the most important commercial center in France, and London had become the most important commercial center in England. However, Paris rose more quickly. In the early 1300s, Paris was twice as big as London. The Black Death, which spread throughout Europe later that century, killed about a third of London's population and a fourth of Paris's population. During the Hundred Years' War, the English took over and occupied Paris for 16 years. Paris remained more of a Catholic stronghold in the 1500s and 1600s, while London shifted to Protestantism. After more and more Catholic church property was privatized in London, many folks got rich there and trade went way up. During the English Civil War, the majority of London residents supported the Roundheads. The Great Fire of London destroyed much of the medieval remnants of the city. Meanwhile, in the 1600s, Cardinal Richelieu led the investment in architecture to make Paris the most beautiful city in Europe. By the 1700s, both Paris and London were the places where the great philosophers and scientists of what became known as the Age of Enlightenment hung out. Paris was arguably where the Enlightenment began, which later gave it the nickname the, quote, City of Light. In 1789, Paris was also the center of a lot of the violence and chaos that came out of the French Revolution. The Industrial Revolution began in Britain, so London had a head start compared to Paris in terms of the huge economic growth related to the rise of machines. Workers came to London in huge numbers numbers during the 1800s. From around 1831 to 1925, London was the largest city in the world, while Paris trailed behind. Although Napoleon III helped revitalize the city in the 1850s and 1860s, during that time, Paris residents lit the streets and monuments with tens of thousands of gas lamps, and that City of Light nickname now made even more sense. Flash forward to the World Wars. Thanks to the French and British victory against the Germans in the Battle of the Marne, Paris was spared. During World War II, however, the Germans easily took over Paris and later bombed the crap out of London. The reason why Paris is relatively intact today and much of the older buildings in London are no longer around is because London's buildings were destroyed by bombs dropped by the German Air Force in the Battle of Britain. Paris didn't get those bombs. They just surrendered. Since World War II, both London and Paris have been much more peaceful and prosperous places. So that wasn't easy, summing up 2,000 years years of history. Anyway, as far as religion, most of Paris and London is fairly secular. In Paris, you drive your car on the right side of the road. In London, you drive on the left side of the road. Public transportation is much cheaper in Paris, but that cheaper public transportation often comes with the constant smell of feces and urine, the random armed guards at train stations, and tone-deaf karaoke singers singing on the subways for money. And public transportation better be cheaper in Paris, since it's much more difficult to find a parking space while driving there. Indeed, the tube in London is much cleaner, and you can use your Oyster card to pay, unlike the primitive way of paying with cash for the metro in Paris. Other random differences? London has less air pollution. Paris has more people just hanging out outdoors. Outdoor cafes are definitely much more of a thing there. Every morning, the amazing smell of baked goods fills the streets of Paris. And if you go out to eat in a restaurant there, expect to be there much longer than you would be at a restaurant in London. In fact, Paris is just more slow-paced overall. Also, in Paris, you can drink in public. 
in London? Nope. After my wife visited both Paris and London, she wrote her first impression of Paris, quote, was not one of love and romance. It was of graffiti, dirt, and vomit, unquote. First of all, Paris has a big rat problem. I'm serious, rats are taking over the city. Also, apparently it's more normal for homeless folks there to sleep on mattresses on the side of the road. You just don't see that in London. London does seem to have less clutter and trash on its sidewalks and streets compared with Paris. Wait a second, hold on. That's just an apocalyptic movie, not real life. There, that's better. See how clean London is? Sorry, Paris, I'm just reporting facts here. The lights on the Eiffel Tower go on for five minutes on the hour every hour every night, so that's pretty groovy. And yeah, Paris does live up to its romantic stereotype. It's common to actually see random people making out throughout the city. Sorry, London, you're not as romantic, although London residents are nicer to visitors compared to Paris residents. <laughs> Let's see what else. There are more scammers in Paris trying to sell you crap on the street. And you have to pay to go to the bathroom there. I mean, sometimes you have to pay to use the bathroom in London too. But in Paris, some fast food restaurants are even strict about letting you use their restrooms. They make you show a receipt to a security guard or enter a code from that receipt to prove you're a paying customer before you can enter the restroom. So this comparison video has turned out to be one of my longest yet. So it's time to wrap it up, knowing I have left out a lot. In conclusion, London and Paris are two extremely important global cities, two of the most exciting places to visit, and inspiring places to live in the world. They've been through a lot, yet continue to lead the world into the future. All right, you may or may not have noticed that I am wearing a Mr. Beat t-shirt right now because I am tacky like that. If you wanna buy a t-shirt just like this one, check out the description of this video. There's a link to my new store with all kinds of goodies. Thank you so much to my beautiful wife, Mrs. Beat, for helping me research this video. She went to London and Paris back in 2008. I have yet to go to both cities, but I hope to visit both of them soon. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? What did I forget to put in the video? And which is better, of course. Also, which two cities do you want me to compare next? There's so much stuff to comment about. Thanks for watching.